name is Seth Ladd, and I want to welcome you to one another of our broadcasts live, talking all about the Dartiverse with Dartisans as we eat Dart Taters. Anyway, we have really awesome special guests here today talking about lots of stuff. It's been a little while, so I want to catch up everyone on the news. We'll talk about the events in the Dart world and meet uh, more community members. So with that, let's go to the Hangout, and I'll introduce everybody. Uh, from the Seattle Dart team, we have Dart engineers Bob Nystrom and Nathan Weisenbaum. Say hello, guys. What up? Hey. Thanks for joining us. And also from Seattle, uh, Kevin Moore, a community member, uh, open source contributor, and all around great software engineer. Hi, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you guys. Nice to be here. So we got a lot of stuff to cover, so why don't we go ahead and dive into it. Let's go over some of the news that uh, we've been seeing. And I want a special shout out to Chris Bucket uh, over there from the UK. He's been doing a great job every week or so collecting the news for us. And a couple items I want to call out. First, of course, last uh, week, two weeks ago, was Google I.O. And uh, all those videos are now live. So if you're interested in catching up with, uh, let's see, we had Lars and Casper give a talk. Uh, we had Dan and VJ give a talk. We had Ray Cromwell give a talk. And then Jamie and I had a code lab. All the videos, the PDFs from the code lab, uh, are now all posted on Google I.O.'s site. So you got to definitely check all those out. Uh, I think it went really well. Uh, a lot of good questions. And hope you can watch those. Uh, let's also see what Chris has collected for us on his blog, Dart Watch. Um, we should probably point out that Brandon Donaldson has been doing a good job collecting lots of different examples of uh, different bits and parts of the Dart language. And so if you're interested in learning more about those, c.dart-examples.com. And we'll post all the links on the, in the show notes. Uh, but Brandon's been doing a good job with lots and lots of different examples there for you to see what the language looks like. Uh, the Dart Flash Library, which is uh, its author, Bernard Pitchler, is pitching as a uh, safe haven for ex-Flash developers moving over to Dart, uh, has started a blog, and he's got an open source game written in Dart using his Dart Flash Library. So definitely check that out. If you have experience with ActionScript 3, this might be interesting to you. John Evans continues his work on Buckshot. Uh, in fact, today he just released a screenshot of his new tree control. And John Evans is uh, one of our earliest adopters of Dart and one of the authors of a growing uh, client-side MVVM type framework. So if you're interested in building uh, client-side web apps with Dart, definitely check out the work John has been doing. Uh, let's talk about some of the upcoming events. And uh, this is definitely where Kevin and Bob can shed some good color here. Uh, this weekend is a hackathon in Seattle, uh, actually at the Google offices in Fremont, uh, to learn and play all about Dart. Kevin, tell us a little bit about what you expect to see and happen at the Seattle Dart Hackathon. Um, I'm happy to. Oh, it looks like our video is finally up, which is great. Um, so yeah, we uh, Seth have coordinated a bunch of hackathons around the world. Actually, was that in April mostly or May? Yeah, something like that. And um, I realized there was none in Seattle, and I knew there were guys in Seattle working on Dart. And so I basically was just the squeaky wheel and said it'd be great to have an event here in Seattle. And so with some amazing collaboration with uh, Seth and uh, and Bob and friends uh, at the Fremont office here in Seattle, we're gonna have a hackathon on Saturday. And so basically, this is an opportunity for those that are interested in Dart, who've played around or want to learn, can get together, meet some people that are actually on the Dart team at Google, uh, and have a chance to write some software, meet other people that are interested in Dart, and hopefully learn and have a good time. And how much is this free hackathon this weekend? Um, <laughs> um, the retail price is $99. But if you register now, um, you'll get in for free, I believe. Awesome. Um, and that fee includes, oh, we're going we're gonna to do bagels and donuts, and we'll provide lunch and some snacks and dinner. Um, so you'll be well fed. Um, and of course, the Wi Fi is free. And when is this free hackathon this weekend? Um, we're starting at 9 a.m. On, uh, on Saturday in the Fremont office. For those who live in Seattle, you'll know what the neighborhood is. Um, and uh, we have an Eventbrite, pra Eventbrite page we'll uh, send a link to for people to register. And um, this afternoon, hopefully, I'll send out an email to people there with details about where to show up and you know, if you have ideas for projects you'd like to work on or like to see worked on, um, you can register for those things. So uh, take a look at the show notes once uh, the video gets published, and you'll be able to see uh, details there. And just make sure you register so we know how many to plan for. Awesome. Yes, definitely register. Bring your friends. We have lots of space, and it's going to be a lot of fun. 
And this is a good segue over to talk to Bob, because Bob is going to grace us with his uh, Introduction to Dart talk, which is also going to premiere at OzCon. And so Bob, talk to, talk to us a little bit about your OzCon event and what you hope to talk about there in your presentation. Well, I mean, you can't say that it's going to premiere at OzCon if I'm also doing it at the, the Dart Hackathon, right? It can't, can't premiere in both places. Oh, that is true. But okay. Yeah, so, <clears throat> um, so my OzCon talk is basically kind of not so much like an introduction to the language itself. Like, it, it skims over the language, um, but it's mostly a contextual talk to just, you know, kind of describe, like, why, you know, we thought it was a good idea to make Dart um, and a bit about, like, at the high level, why it's designed the way it is. Um, hopefully, it will be entertaining, um, but I, I make no promises. Um, and then, mostly for my own personal benefit, uh, I'll, I'll be doing the same talk this Saturday at the hackathon um, as kind of a you know, kind of a dress rehearsal. You know, like you know, like when when '90s bands decide to, to come back and do a reunion tour, and before they do the real tour, they do like some club dates. Well, this will be like my club date, except nice. that I'm not actually a famous '90s band. I'm just you know some guy. So this is the intimate uh, club setting before the uh, before you sell out as a big artist and you play the arena shows. Exactly right. Okay, awesome. Uh, so uh, remind us when when is Oscon and where is it this year? Uh, Oscon is next week. It's I think from. I think it goes from Monday to Friday. I don't know. I'm only there from Wednesday to Friday. It's in Portland, Oregon. It's I think it's always in Portland, um, and uh, it's awesome. There's a lot of big, big pile of nerds all getting together doing nerd stuff. Um, my talk is on Thursday. If you're going to be at OSCON, my talk is on Thursday at 10:40 in the morning. I think I should probably know this, um, and it's going to be awesome. And by awesome, I mean uh, I might do something embarrassing that you could laugh at. And there's a you have some sort of office hours, is that right? Oh, I do, I do indeed. Uh, so I signed up for office hours, which I think basically just means it's like a time and a place where you can find me at OSCON. So uh, that Thursday afternoon, I have some office hours, and you can go bug me, or you know, if you just see me wandering around, you can bug me then too. Awesome. And uh, do you, do you know if the your presentation at OSCON is going to be video recorded at all? Uh, I think it. Is going to be recorded, but I don't know if it's going to be put online. Um, okay. I don't know exactly what the details are. Like I know Oscon records all the talks, but I don't seem to see them appear on YouTube. I don't know if they. Yeah, kind of I think it's a you have to buy them a package deal or something. Well, yeah, we'll see if we can get uh, a, a recording for everyone at home to follow on. If you can't be there at Oscon, but of course if you're going to be there, Bob's an awesome guy. He's really active on the mailing list, really friendly, and so certainly step up, say hi, even if you can't make us talk. Uh, let us know what you think about Dart. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm thinking I'll probably do is I'll just record the talk separately myself, just do kind of a screencast and put that up there, just so you know I've done all the work to rehearse it. Might as well. Perfect. Might as well get a smile out of it as I can. Yeah. Great. That'll be the studio recording. That's right. That's right. Yes. Highly produced. I'll dub some like some crowd sounds so it feels a little more live, and then you know we'll go from there. Uh, one other event I have uh, coming up. It's quite in the future, though. November 11th and 12th. If you're in the Bay Area, be sure to step, stop by and, and check out Learn Game Engine Development with Dart and WebGL. This is really cool. Uh, John McCutcheon and Don Olmstead are putting together a two-day class to teach you all about game development, using WebGL, and programming everything in Dart. And these are uh, hardcore game developers familiar in C and C++ and C Sharp. And I think it's really encouraging, at least for me, to see uh, guys that would have targeted you know, machine code before and find uh, programming the browser now really interesting and exciting thanks to Dart. And so that's in the middle of November. If you're around, check that out. Uh, they gave, Don gave a talk in, uh, in San Francisco a couple weeks ago about using WebGL and Dart. And I believe that got recorded. You can find that on Adam uh, Smith's Google Plus feed. So if you want a little teaser there, check that out. But it, it's cool to see more developers, not just endemic uh, web developers, come to Dart in the browser. So uh, keep that on the radar. That, that's what I have for news and events. Uh, I think one of the big things that we saw come out in the past couple of weeks was Bob's article on Dart language M1 changes. Uh, what we're trying to do is get ready for this, this concept of a public beta, public SDK. And to do that, of course, we need to draw a line in the sand, if you will, around language changes and try to say, <coughs> excuse me, this is the stuff we're going to do soon. This is the stuff we'll do later. This is the stuff we don't think we'll do. The stuff we're doing soon, we're labeling as M1. And I think we're getting really close to what that looks like. And Bob took the time to write up a really great article, which is on dartlang.org. 
Uh, if you go into articles, you can see milestone one language changes. I thought we could spend a few minutes talking about some of the more exciting ones that Kevin, Nathan, and Bob have uh, might have on their radar, or excites them, or interests them the most. Uh, we're not going to cover everything in here, but uh, I don't know, Kevin. Have you seen some of the recent uh, language changes come down? Um. Oh wow, you put me on the spot. I, I did. Really did you should have the I entire did. site memorized. No um, pressure, man. No pressure. Oh, oh wow. Um, actually, it's what's funny is the things I'm most excited about are things that are, are tracked and owned, um, but have yet to come in. Um, you know, Nathan's work on the, the pub stuff is I'm super excited about. Mm -hmm. um, no, I mean, obviously, the, the big discussion, and I was kind of involved with that as well, is this notion that the notion of an interface is kind of going away and it's all going to be classes. And that obviously was a, a big kind of argument and discussion. Um, I think it's been resolved really well. And obviously, the philosophy that keeping the language as simple as possible, um, but no simpler. I think Einstein said something around those lines, um, is a good idea. So that discussion has been really help, help, healthy, I think. And honestly, I think the most important thing is just kind of watching how the community has been involved, the, the DART team and discussion groups. Um, the team has been very responsive. Seth has been spectacular about talking to people. Um, so it's been really fun to kind of get plugged in at the ground floor in that respect. Um, and from from my perspective, looking at what's coming through, just seeing everything tighten up and decisions getting locked down is exciting so that we know the more code we write in Dart, and I've written a bunch so far. Um, hopefully, that means less churn later, which is always a good thing. I think, I think that's the idea, right? If we lock down the language a little bit now, the other pieces can start building on with, with more assumptions. How, uh, Bob or Nathan, what, what's some of the stuff that you, you, you saw coming down with these M1 changes that, that you're looking forward to or found really interesting? Go on, Nathan. <laughs> Well, let me look through. Um, I, I'm also um, pretty excited about the uh, the removal of explicit interfaces. I think it's a, a a good sign that we're moving towards sort of cleaning up some of the um, unnecessary stuff that um, the language has built up. Um, I think uh, th some of the um, some of the the new features, like I think method cascades, are a potentially really interesting way of um, doing a sort of jQuery style uh, uh, way of writing code that deals with a lot of um, accessors and chaining and stuff that, um, uh, without having to declare a bunch of temporary variables. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Bob? Oh, nice, nice. You just you should pass that on to me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, I one of the things that I think is going to be kind of cool once we once we have it and we can start poking with it is um, re-export support. So, one of the things that people talk a lot about Dart as a point of confusion is the difference between um, hash import and hash source. And you know, even once people understand it, there's there's a lot of stuff they don't like about hash source. So. One of the things that I'm interested in playing with is trying to just not use it at all. So if you look at the, the pub code base right now, it's not using hash source. It just uses hash import and basically treats every file as its own library. Um, and I, I think in general, I think that's a, a better model for Dart. Like I enjoy using Dart more that way. But there's a couple of things that you that you can't do if you write all your co code like that. Um, and one of those is you know pull in something from another file, but then have it appear to be coming from you. And re-export is, is going to plug that hole. So I'm hoping that once that's out and you know we can start playing with it, that that'll get us a step towards um, just not having to use source at all and maybe getting rid of that, you know, maybe keeping it in the language, but sort of getting rid of it in terms of like a, a feature that you use in idiomatic Dart code because I think that makes Dart simpler to reason about where you can just say, oh, you just compose stuff using hash import. Um, but you know, we'll have to do some experimentation to see. You know how well that actually works, and like you know, if, if there's kind of like these weird consequences that we aren't thinking about, um, but I think that has the potential to to make sort of just idiomatic Dart a little easier to worry to work with and like reason about. Um, so yeah, so I think that's cool. Brand Brandon from the moderator asks, uh, can you guesstimate on the M1 aim for completion? And I, I don't think we ever really have a good idea when that's going to happen. I think this is on the sooner side than later side, though. Uh, I think we want to get M1 kind of ironed out so, so the other pieces can be built. But I don't think we have an actual time frame for this. Yeah. Language design is 
surprisingly hard. If you ever try to do it, like if, you know, for kicks you decide to make your hobby programming language, it's an interesting learning process. And one of the things that's tricky about it is like, you can't tell if a design decision is good until you've implemented it and written a decent amount of code that uses it. So your your iteration loop for kind of like cranking on the language is, is pretty slow and it makes it hard to be like, oh yeah, you know, here's all the features, they're going to be great, and then they're done, and then the language is done, you know? There's another question on the uh, whoops, sorry. There's another question on the uh, moderator here that asks about mixins. Can you shed some light on what mixins might look like in Dart? And I thought we could address this now while we're talking about some of the upcoming language changes. Uh, have we heard anything about mixins from where you guys sit? Uh, I've heard bits and pieces. Um, I don't know. I don't know really exactly what the status is, or or yeah, I, I, I think. It was kind of fuzzy, but I don't think the syntax has been nailed down yet, um, but I think the, you know, my understanding is that the the basic idea should be pretty close to what you assume if you're familiar with the concept of mixins, in that you can. My understanding is basically, you, you know, you can define a class that takes another class and sort of effectively copies and pastes those methods into your class. So it's kind of just, you know. Um, Kind of gives you some of like the the multi-way composition that multiple inheritance gives you without the you know the crazy dispatch shenanigans that C plus plus gives you. Um, it doesn't but, modify yeah. the class hierarchy, correct? <sighs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a complicated question. Um, I think the effective semantics that you will see is that no, it doesn't. But I think the the way the semantics end up being described in the spec. May may make it appear that they are, you know, like the spec sort of describes things in kind of like an idealized, like you know, kind of you know, sort of abstract semantics way. And in that description, I think I think mixins will look like they are more persistent in the class hierarchy, whereas in practice, I think it will more or less feel like they're kind of just like, you know, just those methods just get kind of slurped in, and everything kind of feels like it's been flattened out. Um, but you know, all of this is still up in the air, so don't hold me to any of it. Yeah, I, be I believe it came up at, at I/O, and it's definitely on the roadmap. And so uh, I know we're trying to get M1 kind of out the door. So I think we'll see this sooner than later. And I know yeah. there's a lot of people asking for mixins, so I think this is one uh, a highly anticipated feature. One of the things that I'm excited about is that because we're getting rid of interfaces, um, if you look at the core library right now, it sort of looks like it was design, especially like the collections by people that were sort of thinking Java even though they were writing Dart and you kind of have everything as an interface and there's this hidden concrete class and because we're getting rid of interfaces I think we have a chance to simplify a lot of that so my hope is that a lot of those things will just be classes and that by default you'll kind of just be able to subclass them. Um, so it's possible that like even before mixins are in the language that you'll you'll be able to do a little more code reuse than you can do with Dart right now. Like right now, if you want to kind of like, re, you know, reuse some of the existing code that implements collections, it's really really nasty and hairy. You have to go into core impl and there's like platform differences and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm hoping that by getting rid of explicit interfaces, even some of that stuff will get surfaced a little more easily. Well, if you're interested in what else is coming down the pipe for the new Dart M1 changes, go on to dartlang.org and look for Milestone 1 Language Changes from the Articles section, or just search for M1 Dart Language Changes. I think you'll find it. There's a lot more in there that we didn't cover, uh, and some really interesting things in there, like an as cast operator. I'll leave you with that little teaser. Um, so certainly do catch up on, on what's happening in the Dart language world. But we also care a lot about the developer experience in Dart. Dart's a lot more than just uh, a language, right? It's a whole batteries included project, and one of the way of life. We have it is it's a it's a way of thinking. Uh, <laughs> But one of the other anticipated features that I really I think is going to blow open the doors for third-party developers is our pub package management system. And that's a, a great topic here for our guests, Bob and Nathan, and then Kevin. And uh, so Bob and Nathan, you guys are working on pub. And Kevin, you've put forth a uh, proposal uh, standard for what these packages might actually look like. So let's dive into pub. awesome, by the yeah, way. Yeah, good awesome. job. Thank you. Let's get started a little bit. Uh, Bob and Nathan, can you spend just a minute talking about what, what Pub is? What is this going to mean to the Dart developer? Well, um, Pub is a package manager. So fundamentally, it's a way of uh, declaring which dependencies your library or application 
um, uses uh, and fetching those dependencies from an external source and installing them so that they're available locally. Um, and dealing with versions. Yeah, it, it, it handles um, version constraints, so you can say, I need, I rely on version, you know, greater than or equal to 1.0 of this package and, you know, less than or um, 2.5 of this other package, and it'll traverse the whole dependency tree of um, everything that those packages depend on and just figure out uh, a whole constellation of packages at specific versions um, to, that will work for your app. Um, it'll be able to update packages uh, to the latest versions when you want to do that. Um, uh, so right now, it can install packages from Git repositories uh, and from the Dart SDK. We are working on getting a um, package repository uh, uh, on um, dartlang.org up and running that will eventually have uh, a place, a way for um, Dart developers out in the wild to uh, create packages, upload them there, and make them available for other Dart developers to use. Um, so I think it's it's pretty exciting. It's um, uh, an important step on the road to a uh, an ecosystem of libraries available for Dart developers to use. Which is uh, one of the first packages I think we'll see is Kevin's Dart lib, and maybe that will conform to his proposed standard for what a package looks like. So I, I find that interesting that, that Pub is about pulling a package down and making it available to your program so you can easily import it, but it doesn't really speak too much about what's inside the package. I think that's where Kevin comes in. So Kevin, can you give us an idea of what, what your idea of what a package looks like? What, what are some of the assets in there? How do they relate? And what would you like to see? Absolutely. Um, I've spent time kind of in a lot of different worlds. You know, obviously in the uh, um, .NET world, and they have their NuGet solution, which has kind of come on last, oh lord, year now, and has made a lot of inroads. And obviously, anyone who's done um, Node is familiar with npm, and Ruby Gems has been around for a long time. Um, and actually, one of the first things I said was, please make Pub more not only do what Ruby Gems does, but do more like what Bundler does, again, for those that are familiar with the Ruby world. Because um, Bundler kind of goes to the next step in making sure that you understand what you install, you understand versions, um, and it's a really powerful solution. So I was super excited to see that um, we were just discussing before we got uh, went live here that I think for a lot of people, you know, this notion of kind of package management, dependency management, is now on that, the top list along with you better have a collection class um, and a model for events. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is a shameless dig. Um, <laughs> see, yeah, we need to get all the right people in the right room for that. <laughs> exactly. Um, so what I did basically was, you know, the pub spec talked a lot about kind of how do you get source down um, and define your dependencies, which is great. Um, but one of the nice things, one of the nice things that are bad things in the Ruby world, at least, um, and this probably applies to other things, is there's many ways to kind of lay out your directory and your assets within a package or within a gem or whatever else. And having a decent convention around that is really helpful. Um, so an example would be, you know, if I define a GitHub repository for a package, um, as a, someone that browsing GitHub, I want to see samples for that library, I want to see tests for that library, I want to see a readme for that library, all these things. Um, but if I take out a dependency on that library in terms of the code I access, it's nice that there's an explicit notion of the code I'm importing is everything in the lib directory and only in the lib directory. And so, um, having those things kind of be laid out and at least having a convention around it is super useful. And so um, I created a package called Dart Blank Lib, which kind of plays off the Dart Lib library I made, which actually has content. And Dart Blank Lib, Dart Blank Lib is a few things. One, it's kind of a, a straw man of how I think a package could be laid out. And once pub, pub moves further, the pub spec um, file format moves forward, that'll get updated to match that. And it's also, I think, really useful for anyone that just wants to start with a library. It starts with a silly, simple, stupid um, live lib. I think it just adds two numbers together. It has a little sample app. It actually has a unit test that verifies that I can add two numbers together. Again, really difficult. But the idea is you could, instead of just forking this, you download it, extract it, you know, rename things as you go. But then things are laid out in a reasonable set of defaults. Again, this is not kind of agreed upon, but it aligns nicely with what we have in 
you know, the Ruby Gems world and, and the NuGet world and the NPM world and the Python world for that matter. Um, so I think it's a good place for people to start. And um, hopefully as PubSpec and other things evolve forward, um, that will evolve as well and tighten up. And I'm always happy to get feedback. And did you mention this is on GitHub, right? You can find it how? Yep. We'll post a link. It's under Kev Moo is my account on GitHub. And so a bunch of my Dart fun is there. And that's one of them. Well, so, it's speak, speaking of Dart fun, you mentioned Dart lib, uh, that you extracted this Dart blank lib from. What, what is Dart lib? Um, I spent a few years at Microsoft, um, about three, working on their frameworks, working on some of their GUI frameworks. Um, and so I really got into this framework <laughs> state of mind um, around you know, how do you think about factoring out code, making it reusable. Um, and in the, in the .NET world, I ran forward and did something called the Bag of Tricks, which a lot of people played with related to Silverlight and WPF and other .NET things. Um, when I started doing JavaScript work, I made a closure library, closure um, compiler library related to a bunch of work that my company did, Pixel Lab. Um, and so I wanted to play that forward into Dart. And so Dartlib is basically a collection of stuff, most of which I think is pretty reasonable to say this is relatively common. And so I'm doing a bunch of work on, um, I'm calling it enumerable to kind of map to the .NET model so that you can do kind of chained dot .where, dot .from, dot .select, dot .average, um, kind of the sort of things you're used to with links index and .NET. Along some of the collection helpers, I have a whole retained graphics model that plays on top of Canvas that has hit testing and some other things I'm playing with. And so basically, I'm working on my own little project kind of for fun. And it's an idea I've had for almost 10 years now about simulating and playing with um, different election methods, voting methods. Huh. Um, I have feedback about how moderator works. And so kind of as I'm running with that uh, vote.dart project, I call it, I'm adding things to dartlib. And the idea is if people want you know, size and rect, if they want an event model, a disposable model, it's always good to share these concepts and not kind of be reinventing the wheel. So I'm using it for my projects. I've already taken a few patches from other, some other folks. And I'm happy to you know, collaborate with others. Please fork, send pull requests. Um, I'm excited to kind of expand out some of these base libraries. It's certainly what makes the .NET world awesome, um, and NPM, and uh, RubyGems. There always seems to be like this handful of libraries that everyone uses, and it makes just you know, um, you know, you want to bring you know you want the sink included, and so this adds some nice Chrome to the sink and a shower and and a stove, um, and hopefully we'll make uh, using Dart more fun and more productive for a lot of people. Well, I think it not only reduces the amount of uh work you have to do to get started with a project. But it's really nice to have these common bits of functionality cross Dart projects so that a Dart developer can approach multiple different projects and feel more comfortable more quickly. So I think there's a lot, to, a lot there when you have that convention over configuration or that just simply the shared kind of convention of what the common libraries are. So definitely thank you for that. And it's really cool to see that you're already taking patches for that. The question I love to ask our uh, external co uh, community members is, what are some of the things you'd like uh, to see from the Dart project? You've written a lot of code. I'm sure you have a couple ideas. Um, well, what would I like to see from the Dart project? I actually started um, writing a list of these things. Um, a lot of it just there's some kind of outstanding bugs around being able to instantiate um, uh, final static variables with const and this weirdness there that's causing some issues in my library. Um, I'd love to see. Go ahead. Is it that you want non-const final statics? Um, both, actually. Const final statics don't work yet. There's bugs on it that I'm tracking and just waiting for those to be resolved. Um, if anyone um, loads up the Dart lib, and it actually, you get errors in um, uh, the Dart editor. Thankfully, it runs time, everything works. But you see kinds of errors come up. Mm -hmm. um, other things that have been discussed are um, being able to do uh, case statements against classes, so we can kind of emulate what an enum is. Um, yeah. I think those issues being tracked there. Um, yeah, so that actually it, does work now and is going to stop working. <laughs> it, I get warnings on it now. So you're saying it's actually going to completely stop working. So, so right now in Dart, you can do kind of the Java type safe enum pattern, where you have an enum-like class that has static instances of itself, and then you can switch on those. Um, and the the changes we're making to switch to constrain it will, I think at least what's been specified right now, kind of nullify that pattern, unfortunately. But I know they're talking about loosening it up a bit to basically keep that working. Um, but yeah. <laughs> OK, so I pre-file my bug now, or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Um, and I, I, we joke around about that stuff. Obviously, you know, I think the Dart team is doing a good job to keep the first release tight. And that's yeah. part of the you know, thing with Dart Lim, too, which is... Oh, go ahead. Enums are a valid concern, um, and it's, you know, at least we kind of had a pattern for a while, so it's, I think it's a gap that we know we want to fill somehow, and I just don't know if we've, if we've really filled it yet. I'll take, um, I'll take no solution in the short term better than a broken <laughs> solution that we have to support forever. Um, so sure. that's awesome. Um, oh, and really quickly, we talked about an event model, which I, you know, people have discussed. I have an implementation that basically maps to the closure library. Actually, a lot of my code is kind of mapped to what the closure guys have done. Um, um, so having that formalized, I think that's something that would be actually good to have in the core framework. Um, and then these other things that have been discussed a lot. Um, I would love to have generic methods. Um, that's something that's brought up by a few people. And so you know, those aren't super needed for v1. Obviously, it's going to be added later. But as I've got, um, and then related to the, um, the mix-ins thing, I'm actually I'd much rather have extension methods, which is a model that kind of exists in C sharp. Um, but obviously, for a lot of these things, a lot of people just want their pet feature from their favorite language. And if it doesn't gel, we'll always be mad. But um, you kind of have to stick to the spirit of the language. So I'm not expecting, you know. 100% alignment with everything I love about .NET, because at the same time, I can run it in a browser, which I can't do with, with C Sharp. So um, um, I'll take the good with the bad. Good list. Thanks. And it sounds like you're already plugged into the issue tracker, and that's the best way. And so if you uh, watching uh, this at home have ideas, certainly join the mailing list, dartlang.org slash mailing dash list. Or uh, you can file issues and bugs at dartbug.com. So lots of good ways to get a hold of us. It's an all an open source project. And uh, we have lots of engineers active on the mailing list and answering the issues. So I, um, yeah, we'd love to hear what you have on your short list of things you want to see for the project. Um, we should probably also mention, before we move into the, the Q&A section here, uh, is that uh, Pub, uh, Pub's in the SDK today. And as Nathan mentioned, you can install stuff from Git now. See, the basics of Pub are there working. Kevin Startlib is there working in, uh, um, on GitHub. You can pull that down and play with that. So a lot of the stuff we're talking about today uh, is operational in some form and coming online very quickly. And so uh, it's definitely a good place for you guys to play, experiment, yeah. try your libraries, and then give us that feedback as we roll into this uh, M1 phase of the project. I will throw out the caveat, though, that um, you're certainly welcome to start poking at Pub, but it's you know it's at 0.0.0, .0 right? We're like we're still in active development, so we reserve the right to you know break everything, set your computer on fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, don't you, quote that. It, yeah, we're, I mean, you're certainly welcome to try it out, but uh, you know, you're taking your life into your own hands if you do. But hopefully, I think hopefully it won't set your computer on fire. <laughs> right? Yeah, hopefully you have that bit enabled. But uh, it is a good. I mean, the flip side of that is it's a good opportunity to try it out and let us know where the use cases that you need to get solved. Because now we can take the opportunity to break stuff to make sure we hit those major use cases. So I think that's, that's to me, what keeps this project really exciting right now is that, yes, things are moving very quickly, but uh, you're part of something new, something that's going to be big, right at the early stages. And that, that's really exciting to see it be born and grow and maybe even help influence its design. So we've got a couple questions of a moderator for you guys. Let's see if we can answer some of these. These are all voted up from, from the community. We've already answered some of them. Uh, but this one kind of comes up a lot. Uh, is the Dart widget control UA library on the roadmap based on closure library or a port of it? And do we have any sort of timing? Um, I know that the Seattle team is working on some sort of UI library. You guys are there in Seattle. Do, um, have yes. you seen anything happen there? Or is it, what's going um, on? I, mean, I definitely see stuff happening. There are people working on it. Um, as far as whether it's based on closure, it's maybe heavily inspired by Clojure is a good description. It's not a straight port, um, and I don't think there's an intention for it to be a straight port. But I think Clojure is probably the widget framework that is the the closest mental model at hand when they're designing that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like roadmap and time frame, you know, there's the usual, like, we don't usually make kind of prediction stuff. Um, yeah, too hard. We'd like it to be really soon because we know people, you know, totally want it really bad and, you know, We'd like it to be out there, but I don't know what the timing is. Yeah. And I think, again, uh, it helps when the language settles down a little bit, and then the library settles. You know, so these things build on each other. And just 
to me, at the top really is that UI library. So a lot of stuff I think has to happen before that lands. But um, there are a bunch of open source projects out there that are trying to build a sort of MVVM framework too. So you don't, you know, it doesn't have to come from the Dart project necessarily for you guys to get started. Uh, we mentioned John Evans with Buckshot. Another one we just saw came out yesterday on Git, or at least we just found on GitHub yesterday. I think it's Dart MVVM. Uh, there's a port of Pure MVC, and I'm sure there's others. Uh, Chris Bucket has a good list of community projects. So in other words, there are options out there if you guys are interested. And you know, Kevin with his Dartlib is taking cues and inspiration from Clojure as well. And so I think there's there's a lot to get started with for sure. Let's see. Neo from New York City writes: Is Google eating its own dog food by using Dart internally on Google projects? Uh, so while we won't comment on any internal projects, uh, we can say that our internal teams checking out Dart and giving us good feedback. Um, the tricky part there is, as you can probably imagine, um, the Google infrastructure um, has, has a unique set of constraints. And uh, so we try to balance building Dart for uh, our open source developers, the external developers, who we really see as our primary audience, but also try to balance that with our internal customer needs. And so we play this tricky balancing game. But uh, there are internal teams looking at it. But I think we're squarely interested in making this and keeping this an open source project for all developers uh, out there to use. And that, that's one of the things that makes, excites me at least about Dart. This is, this is not just for Google by Google. This is really uh, to help all developers, not just even endemic web developers, to build awesome stuff for the web. Uh, ah, John Evans writes, how is Pub for Windows coming along? Guys, guys. Uh, so, <laughs> so every day or two, Nathan and I kind of poke each other and say, "Not it." Um, the actual, <laughs> the actual quantity of work that we need to do for Windows support is pretty small, right? There's a couple of places in the code base um, that don't work, and you know we have to fix those. So basically, when it's shelling out to a couple of things, we need to do some Windows specific stuff there, um, and you know we will do that eh, relatively soon. Um, I'm not sure what the time frame is, but you know, the probably the best way to, to describe this is like we don't officially support any operating system with Pub right now. Right? Like, it's still under development. How so, convenient. <laughs> yeah. um, but definitely, like I can say for me, I'm very cognizant that the longer we delay working on Windows, the more technical debt we're accruing, and I don't want to be deep in that hole. Um, so, like right now, I don't have a lot of time to be working on Pub, but as soon as I can get back to it, it's really high on my list of stuff that I want to do because I think it's I think it's very important for Pub to be a good citizen and to work equally well across all all operating systems. Yeah, I don't think we'll consider it done until it supports Windows. Definitely yeah. not. I, I like I like that mentality. And I, it it's not an excuse or a cop out or anything, but I do want to say of course that Dart is open source and I, I believe the pub tool is the pub tool in a separate repository? How what is mm -hmm. that? No. So pub is in the main repo. Okay. Um, and it kind of has to be in the main repo. If you imagine you know, farther down the future when Pub is closer to done, what you would do is you would install the Dart SDK, and all that really needs to include is a, a Dart VM and Pub, so that then you can get all the other packages through Pub. But Pub does have to be there, right? It's part of kind of your your batteries included bootstrap process. Um, so Pub is in the main repo, but the 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 hosting site, the package hosting site we're working on that Nathan's working on, pub.dartling.org, that's in a, a separate repository. Ah, that's what I thought. Okay. Well, we, we take patches. I believe we've taken even a patch from John and others. And so step on up, I guess. I mean, we'll definitely get to it. But it is open source, and we've taken patches. So that's, that's cool. Um, well, Ladislav, a, a guy really active on the mailing list, writes, uh, Dart's library system is known to be changed sometime in the future. Are there any details on that already? And will it allow creating a package management system completely independent of the language without the need to specify the package colon scheme? Um, um, yeah, go go ahead and see if you can get that. Yeah, I think package colon is going to be around for at least a while, um, uh, partially because of the constraints of supporting both uh, uh, browser development and um, uh, server side development. It for for the browser, it's very important that the actual files that you're um, that you use as your libraries are available in a place that the web server can see them and then serve them to the browser. Um, and the the package directory solution does a good job of managing that. Um, I think we have some hopes that the syntax for it will uh, would be nice. evolve into something more palatable, um, possibly 
even something that doesn't require you to write package colon, but I think the the fundamental import structure will be pretty similar for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. So the, the high level goal that, that Ladislav was talking about is will Dart will Dart the language support multiple independent package managers? Mm -hmm. And that was definitely a design constraint when Casper was coming up with the package colon stuff. So that's you know the idea is we basically need to have kind of this minimum interface, like this minimum level of abstraction that all Dart implementations support, and that that gives you just enough of a port to jam in your own package management system. And the package colon prefix, as syntactically ugly as, as it is, is basically that, that port. So the idea is, you know, every Dart implementation is hard-coded to know what to do with a package colon um, like a package colon import, but all that does is kind of swizzles your URL to something, and you can implement your own package manager, and as long as it generates something that ends up at that swizzled URL, you can have whatever incoming semantics you want for that. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the idea. It still, it still doesn't feel totally baked yet, and definitely, um, you know, I would certainly like the syntax to be better, and it's something that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we can kind of turn the crank on, uh, but you know, there's never any time. I've actually got to run, but yeah. Bye. And that, all right, thank you, Nathan. And I, I think with that, we've round, we've round up most of the good questions on there. And I want to take again this opportunity to thank all our special guests, Nathan, Bob, Kevin. Thank you guys so much. Uh, best of luck with Pub, uh, your talk at OzCon, the Hackathon this uh, Saturday. I'll see you guys there, and anyone else that's going to be there too. Um, and just a lot of good stuff happened around Dart. And so to follow along, of course, we have the Dart mailing list. Uh, uh, misc at dartling.org. We have the issue tracker, dartbug.com. Uh, of course, the Google Plus page, plus Dart. And uh, the hashtag, which I see being used on Twitter and Google Plus, pound Dartling. So lots of good ways to follow along, and we'll do more of these. And so we hope to see you next time at another broadcast of Dartisans. And uh, we hope to see you in the mailing list. And thank you for trying Dart. So thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Aloha.